Operators of four nuclear plants in Japan are taking a step toward a goal that has been distant for a couple of years. They say they're preparing to apply for permission in July to restart reactors. Only one plant is online following the accident in Fukushima. Utility companies must meet new rules in order to fire up others. NHK World's Yoichiro Tateiwa explains. The four plants in question are dot across Japan, from the south to the northern island of Hokkaido. Operators must prove reactors at the facilities adhere to new safety measures that come into effect in July. Nuclear regulators developed the guidelines in response to the 2011 accident at Fukushima Daiichi. Japan has 17 commercial nuclear plants. At one point, all of them were offline because of the Fukushima crisis. Government leaders allowed the operator of the oil plant to restart two reactors last summer. They were concerned about the power shortages. Nearly a year later, the safety requirements facing the plant operators are even tougher. We hope to restart reactors as soon as their safety is confirmed. The new guidelines will force operators to prepare for severe accidents, including power outages and meltdowns. They must build a separate control room off-site to serve as a backup facility. And they must install filters on vents used to release pressurized air in the reactors. That will limit the escape of radioactive substances during emergencies. Operators will also be required to introduce tougher measures against tsunami. They will have to study the potential height of a tsunami and build seawalls to withstand the largest waves. Officials at the Nuclear Regulatory Agency say they will set up three 20-member teams to screen applications, but some experts are concerned the system will not be effective. The new regulations cover severe accidents, which previous guidelines did not. The examiners have little knowledge of this area, so they'll be learning and making difficult decisions as they go. That raises doubts about their expertise. Regulators say it will take six months to a year to complete the reviews. But the issue is not how long the work will take, but rather how effectively it will be done. Medical health professionals have checked workers at the site of an accident at a Japanese nuclear laboratory. They say 30 people there were exposed to radiation, and they still have to check six others. Researchers were conducting an experiment on Thursday at a lab northeast of Tokyo. They were bombarding gold with a proton beam to generate particles. But something went wrong. Spokespersons for the Japan Atomic Energy Agency say 28 men and two women were exposed to radioactive substances. But they say the health of those they've checked was not put at risk. The authorities are looking into what happened. They're also trying to find out why the people who run the lab waited for more than a day to report the accident. According to a follow-up report on a radiation exposure accident last week, researchers at the Japanese laboratory went on with their work even after an alarm went off to report an equipment malfunction. The accident occurred at a Japan Atomic Energy Agency facility in Ibaraki Prefecture at around noon on Thursday. The scientists were bombarding gold with proton beams to generate elementary particles. When the alarm went off at around noon, the equipment automatically stopped, but the researchers reset the alarm and resumed the experiment without looking into the cause. The radiation level within the facility rose after about 90 minutes. The researchers temporarily stopped the experiment and turned on exhaust fans. It seems the fans blew some radioactive substances into the outside environment. When the radiation level dropped, the work resumed. The researchers finally stopped the experiment after 4 p.m. when the level rose further. The equipment malfunction created an unexpected amount of radioactive substances. At least six male researchers were exposed. Physical examinations of other workers are continuing. Radiation checks outside the facility did not take place until the following day. 
It took the operator one and a half days to report the accident to the Nuclear Regulation Authority. Agency officials admit the series of actions were inappropriate and will investigate the accident. Thank you very much, everybody. A trouble that plagued a nuclear facility in central Japan is facing another setback. After being offline for much of its 19-year history, regulators have told the operator of the Mungju fast breeder reactor not to prepare to restart the unit until improvements have been made. Nuclear Regulation Authority officials gathered to approve an order they issued earlier this month. The prototype reactor generates power using plutonium extracted from spent nuclear fuel. A government inspection asked Steer found about 10,000 missed equipment checks. A government inspection last year found about 10,000 missed equipment checks. What the fuck? Regulators criticized the Japan Atomic Energy Agency for inadequate safety management. They've ordered the operator to show improvements have been made before preparing to restart the reactor. The agency must implement a system that allows accurate checks of all equipment and ensures maintenance is carried out. It also has to review security measures to make sure safety is the top priority. Government officials are grappling with another problem for the nuclear energy industry. They're debating how to dispose of high-level waste produced by power plants. <laughs> What's so funny now? I sometimes just think funny things. The government enacted a law in 2000 to bury the waste hundreds of meters underground, but the plan stalled when people living near candidate burial sites opposed it. Top scientists recommended scrapping the policy. A panel of government experts has reopened discussion on the matter. Some want to press on with the plan, but only after informing the public about the options and asking local governments to cooperate. <laughs> Others say it's time to think of new options. Officials will also discuss whether Japan should continue reprocessing spent nuclear waste or dispose of it directly. Officials will also discuss whether Japan should continue reprocessing spent nuclear waste or dispose of it directly. The leaders of Japan and India are strengthening ties by focusing on an energy source that has been the subject of heated debate in this country. They've agreed to move forward with negotiations to sign the Nuclear Power Pact, the deal would allow Japanese companies to export atomic energy-related technology. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and Prime Minister Mohan Sin signed a joint statement after a meeting in Tokyo. The countries will speed up negotiations so they can conclude a deal soon. Indian leaders want to build more nuclear plants and they are looking to Japan for help. The statement also calls for mutual efforts to work toward the abolition of nuclear weapons. But some Japanese are reluctant to commit to this pact, 
India has nuclear arms and it has yet to sign the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. The leaders have also agreed to promote joint exercises involving Japan's Maritime Self-Defense Force and India's Navy. The government officials on both sides are expected to appoint representatives to a working group to look into exporting Japan's US-2 rescue amphibious aircraft to India. South Korean nuclear regulators have shut down two reactors after determining some parts had fake safety certificates. They suspended two other reactors last year because of the same issue. After the investigation, we confirmed that there were fake documents related to the nuclear power plant. Officials with the Nuclear Safety and Security Commission say cables in four reactors located at two separate plants were not tested properly. They say the safety certificates were forged. The commission ordered the shutdown of two of the reactors. The two other units weren't in operation. The commission is calling for all cables to be replaced. South Koreans were outraged last year by revelations that parts with fake documents were being used in reactors. They called for regulators to do a better job at managing risks. The latest shutdown order means 10 out of 23 reactors are offline, raising fears of power shortages during the peak summer months. The managers of a government-affiliated nuclear agency are facing tough questions after they waited a day and a half to report an incident at one of their facilities. At least 30 of their researchers were exposed to radiation, and some of that radiation leaked out of the compound. This kind of case is a concern in any country, but in Japan, following the 2011 accident in Fukushima, sensitivity about radiation exposure is much higher. NHK World's Kaho Izumitani reports. Researchers at the Japan Atomic Energy Agency facility investigate the fundamental components of matter and measure interactions. On Thursday, they were operating equipment that bombards gold with proton beams to generate elementary particles. The radioactive substances formed usually remain inside the gold. But a malfunction made the beams 400 times stronger. That melted the gold and released radioactive substances directly into the air. An alarm went off, shutting down the equipment. The researchers couldn't find the reason for that alert, so they reset the alarm and kept working. In addition, they turned on the exhaust fans twice to lower the radiation in the room. It's believed radioactive substances leaked out of the facility. We sincerely regret this outcome. The team was initially sent home without receiving a proper medical checkup. At least 30 people were exposed to a maximum radiation level of 1.7 millisieverts. That's considered to pose no health risk. It took facility managers a day and a half to report the incident to the government. Both our understanding and handling of the situation were inappropriate. Even if we were trying to lower the dose inside the facility. People in a village that's less than a kilometer away are worried. It's scary. They should have notified us immediately. The Nuclear Regulation Authority has initially classified the incident as a level one out of a seven on an international scale, saying the Japan Atomic Energy Agency didn't handle the radioactive material appropriately. As a point of reference, the accidents in Fukushima and Chernobyl are ranked seven. Experts say the agency needs to improve safety measures. The fact that there was no protocol and there was no preventive uh, uh, equipment for preventing the uh, radioactive materials to be released outside of this facility and, uh, and that people were not prepared uh, for public relations, for disseminating the fact that the accident happened and this uh, should have been done in a different way, especially after the Fukushima Daiichi accident. After the Fukushima accident, the nuclear industry in Japan faced domestic and international criticism for its poor crisis management and delayed information sharing. This latest incident suggests 
that the work to change what some consider a culture of complacency is far from over.